Welcome back. Today on our journey through the Bible, we will learn about brave Queen Esther. Medes and Persians. Our memory verse today comes from Isaiah 40, verse 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. Hadassah. In the main city of the kingdom of Persia and Media, Shushan, there lived a young orphan girl of the captives from Judah, named Hadassah. After her parents had died, she lived with her cousin Mordecai. Mordecai was faithful to Jehovah and taught his cousin Hadassah to love and fear God as well. Mordecai also worked in the king's palace at the king's gate. Some years later, King Ahasuerus was having problems with his wife. She shamed and dishonored him in front of the noblemen of the kingdom, and by the unchangeable Persian and Median law, she was put away. But now, the king needed a new wife. His advisers suggested that all the beautiful maidens from throughout his realm be assembled and vetted for suitability. The one that pleased the king best should be chosen as queen. As one of the beautiful young maidens in Persia and Media, Hadassah was chosen to be presented to the king. Before Hadassah left her home to go to the palace, Mordecai counseled her not to let anyone know she was a Jewess. From that time, she went by the name Esther. Esther arrived at the palace, and there were many, many maidens from all over the whole realm. Mordecai would pass by the palace regularly to check on her, not letting anyone know that they were related. When it was her turn, Esther made herself ready and was presented to the king. The king was very pleased with Esther's natural beauty and demeanor. All the king's counselors agreed that she was the most beautiful of the assembled ladies. The king then chose her to be his wife. Esther was now queen of all Persia and Media, and the king loved her very much. For such a time as this. One day, while Mordecai was working at the king's gate, he heard of a plot to kill the king. So, he went quickly to Esther and told her the information. Esther immediately informed the king of the plot and the informant. The two men that were planning to kill the king were both found and hanged. The information of this incident was logged in the chronicles of important events in the kingdom. Time went on and the king forgot about the assassination attempt. There was a man in the king's court called Haman. He was a self-important man, always seeking to advance himself. The king had promoted him to oversee all the princes in the kingdom. All the king's servants were expected to bow to Haman. However, because Mordecai was a believer in Jehovah, he did not bow to Haman. This enraged Haman. He did not like Mordecai at all and made it his solemn focus to see Mordecai dead. To accomplish this goal, Haman made a plot against all the Jews in the whole kingdom. So, Haman approached the king with a problem. He said that there was a group of people scattered throughout the kingdom that kept laws different from the king's law. He said that the best way to deal with this problem was to have them all killed and reward those that kill them with silver. 
The king agreed and told Haman to do what he saw best. Now there was a law in the kingdom of Persia and Media that on a specific day all the Jews of the kingdom were to be killed. When Mordecai heard of the new law, he went into mourning. All the Jews throughout the kingdom went into mourning when they heard of the law. When Esther heard of Mordecai's mourning, she sent a servant to inquire what was happening. Her servant returned with the grim news that all the Jews were to be killed. Mordecai also sent a request that she go before the king and plea for their lives, reminding her that she is in as much danger as the rest of the Jews. Esther was very nervous about going before the king. At this point, the king hadn't sent for her for 30 days, and there was a law that said no one may come to the king unbidden. Anyone who went to the king without being called would die, unless the king put out his golden scepter in acceptance of their visit. Esther requested that Mordecai and all the Jews in Shushan fast. She and her maidens also fast for three days. Following the fast, she would go to see the king, saying, If I perish, I perish. He that rolleth a stone. After the three days of fasting, Esther washed and dressed herself nicely and boldly went to the king's throne room. When the king saw her, he smiled and held out his golden scepter to her, and she touched it. Then he asked for her request. Esther invited the king and Haman to a dinner she had prepared. At the banquet, the king again asked Esther what she wanted, offering her up to half his kingdom. Esther again invited the king and Haman to another dinner the next day, at which she said she would tell the king her request. The king agreed, and Haman was overjoyed at this level of attention from the treasured queen. That night, Haman went home and told his wife and friends of all his fortune with the queen. But he was still upset by Mordecai's refusal to bow to him. His wife and friends advised him to build a gallows especially for Mordecai and request that the king have him hung on it. This plan suited Haman well, and he had it done. On that same night, the king could not sleep. So he had a servant read the chronicles of the kingdom to him. When the servant came across the entry of Mordecai warning him of the assassination plot, he asked what was done for him. The servant replied that nothing had been done. This disturbed the king greatly. He had to remedy this oversight. The next day, when Haman came to work, the king asked him, what should be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor? Haman, still thinking only of himself, told the king that he should dress the man in the king's royal clothes, place the king's crown on his head, and have him ride on the king's horse. He said all these things should be brought to the man by one of the king's most noble princes, and he should dress the man and lead him through the city, shouting, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honor. The king liked this idea and told Haman to do this for Mordecai right away. After parading Mordecai through the streets, Mordecai went back to work and Haman went home lamenting. He was scheming to kill the man the king delighted to honor. His family warned him that his plan would backfire. Before he could think about alternate plans, he was summoned to the queen's dinner. At the dinner, the king again asked the queen for her request. Now Esther requested that her life be spared. She told the king that a decree had gone out to destroy her and her people. The king was aghast and asked who would order such a thing. Esther answered, This wicked Haman! 
the king was enraged and had him arrested. The king's servant informed him of the gallows Haman had built in his yard for Mordecai, the king's protector. The king ordered directly that Haman be hanged on the gallows he made for Mordecai. Then the queen told King Ahasuerus of her relation to Mordecai, and the king promoted Mordecai to Haman's former position. However, the unchangeable law of the Persians and Medians was still there, endangering the lives of all the Jews in the kingdom. So the king allowed Mordecai to formulate a new law, decreeing that the Jews in the entire realm could defend themselves against anyone who attacked them. God's people were made safe again in the kingdom of Persia and Media. Now it's time for our activity. First question, where was the king's palace in Persia and Media located? Correct, it was in the city of Shushan. Next question, who plotted to wipe out the Jews in Persia and Media? Correct, that wicked Haman. Last question, how were the Jews saved in the Persian and Median kingdom? That's right, Queen Esther, a Jewess, appealed to the king. Now, write or say the memory verse from memory. Next time, we'll read about the coming of the promised Messiah. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so.